And joining us for more on tonight's topic is Ali El Haj, inventor and owner of Zookeeper, a device used to safely capture the venomous lionfish, and two time semifinalist for the James Beard Best Chef Award, Steve Phelps of Indigenous. Thank you both for being here. And this is really a, a fascinating uh, topic. And Ali, let me start with you by asking you how did this become such a problem with lionfish becoming an invasive species? Well, I think, well, the first time I ever heard about lionfish was in 2011. And um, first of all, thanks for having us um, today. Um, the problem actually started uh, a lot earlier, um, where all of a sudden, like in 2006, there was an explosion of their, their numbers throughout the Caribbean. Um, that, that's when everybody started um, looking at, at this fish and, and the detriment that it is to our, our marine environment. Now, were people having them at home or in aquariums as pets and then started releasing them into the open water? So the, theor the theory that is most accepted is that aquarium enthusiasts released some lionfish into um, off the coast of the of the East Florida um, in the mid early to mid 80s and a bunch of these lionfish found each other and started multiplying. <laughs> Quite aggressively, we yes. understand. <laughs> Something like uh, they re reproduce every four days and up to uh, 18 uh, protective venomous uh, spines. That means that if you get stung, uh, it can be a little bit painful. It could be very, very painful. Um, everybody has a different reaction to the venom. Um, I know that the first time I got stung, it was excruciating pain. Um, I wouldn't want anybody to go through that. So you invented this device? Yes, so this was, the zookeeper was first designed specifically for lionfish to safely contain them while, while you're removing them from the, um, from the reefs and, and, and it, protect the diet. And it works well. It's been, yeah, it's been working very well. I, I wouldn't dive without one. <laughs> you know what's absolutely incredible, uh, Steve, is it's not too often we get to say we, uh, we can possibly eat our way out of a big problem, but uh, you're, you're giving it uh, your best shot. You're, you're serving lionfish at, at uh, your restaurant. Absolutely. You know, I think uh, not only am I doing it, but everybody in, in our community and, and mostly through the coastlines is really jumping on board. I think, uh, you know, as we talked earlier, we six months ago we were just hearing about it as chefs and knew a lot of guys that were down south of us in the in the islands were really enjoying it. And um, you know, as we learned how invasive it was, we started getting little tastes of it here and there, and realized that I mean, this fish has an amazing flavor to it, and its versatility is is fantastic, like a really good snapper. So, well, let's describe that. What does it taste like, and how do you prepare it? Um, to me, I mean, a lot of people don't know what hogfish is, but I think it's very similar to that meat. It's a very translucent, very beautiful white meat. Um, flounder. Flounder, I would find it in that same category. Um, just super delicate white meat. Mm -hmm. um, we see it more as a raw application just because it's got such Meaning a... Meaning you don't cook it? No, no, no heating on it at all. Um, we've done some techniques where we'll just drizzle a little olive oil on it and then just warm, like infuse it with a little torch and then season it with some great seasonings um, and do it that way. But as a fried little teeny filet, because most of the filets we usually get are small, small. but <laughs> the chefs always request the big fish from these guys. Um, you know, fried and battered like that is, is fantastic too. So it's, you know, on the plate, it's a home run. Now, obviously, the, the question that most people sitting at home right now would be asking is, if it is venomous, how do you, how do you make sure that by eating it, you're not affected by it? Absolutely. It's, uh, it's, there's been a big, big misconception about um, blowfish, which, as we were talking about earlier, is, is poisonous. And then the lionfish is venomous. Um, so when we receive those fish, apparently after they've, they're, they're deceased, so to speak, the, the venom has decreased a little bit in their, their system. So in those barbs, those spines, um, you get pricked, it's still going to be really painful. I mean, just 
while it's dead, preparing it that way. So um, we use a pair of thick garden gloves when we first receive it, a pair of kitchen shears, and then go ahead and cut these spines off and cut the tail off. And then we've got a beautiful fish that we can work with safely after that. So we usually just start in the kitchen with the scissor team. Everybody just starts cutting it up and then the people who don't want to do that part will jump in and do the fillet work. Um, but if you can get past that safely in, in just having the knowledge of what it can do to you because you really don't want to test yourself, um, it, it's, it's so easy to work with. And how many local restaurants are, are doing this? I could say on right now I know five and that's increasing. Um, we've got a really good um, collaboration of chefs nowadays that are sharing information about sustainable seafood and I think there's probably about five or six that are playing with it for specials. Ali, I can imagine that you, <laughs> all jokes aside, you really can't eat your way out of this problem. So is anybody doing or, uh, or, or researching how to uh, really basically get a handle on this because it's my understanding if you don't then other species of fish are going to be endangered. Right, so um, lionfish are gluttonous eaters so they'll decimate our native uh, fish population. There are, um, right now with, with a zookeeper and a pole spear, um, divers are doing a great job at recreational depths which is roughly up to 130 feet. Um, there are entities that are working on, on traps, lionfish specific traps, um, for beyond recreational levels. I know of two, two traps right now being studied in um, Curacao. Uh, one's deployed at 180 feet and one at 320 feet. And the interesting thing is within three weeks, uh, one of the traps had lionfish in it. So, so people are looking into it, marine biologists and, um, and other um, people that have started to come up with products. Specifically, what are the other kinds of uh, a fish or sea life are threatened by the lionfish? And are you already seeing this impacting yeah. demand for other fish that you serve in your restaurant? Yes. The, what happens is the lionfish decimate our native fish on a reef so quickly that you will see less and less of our predators, the groupers, the snappers, um, come to that reef. So the fishermen, the commercial guys that go out there to get these fish won't find them. Um, the interesting thing is that lionfish also eat small snapper and small groupers. So without removing these, we could see extinction of certain species, not necessarily snoop, uh, grapper, um, grouper or snapper, but, but other very important, either ecological or economical fish. Steve, you, do you already see this as having an impact in terms of what you can get in? I, I do, and, 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 and that's absolutely true with what he said. I think I've got guys who not only are, are commercial for us to sell to the restaurants, um, but I have friends that, that go out and they dive and they fish, and there are spots that they had that were their lucky spot, their hot spot, and they're going out there now, and they're, they're not seeing the snapper and the grouper and, and the other species that are down there. Um, and they're right away just realizing why. They get down there, and it's, it's lionfish infested. I mean, it's, it's an infestation is what I would call it, and that's what they're starting to say. You know, we used to go to mile 45 and whatever spot, and now it's infested and we don't really go down there anymore. And so it is affecting those, those guys to and, us too. And we're running out of time, but obviously is this a Florida or Gulf only problem or is this a problem elsewhere? Actually, no, it's, it's the entire Gulf of Mexico, the entire Caribbean, the East Atlantic up to North Carolina and all the way down to roughly Rio de Janeiro. But it, to touch on um, the, the great thing about lionfish now is that there, there's such a demand created by restaurants that if there is a lot of lionfish at one particular site, those, those fishermen can actually take them and wholesalers throughout the state will actually buy them from them. Right. So that's the demand fishery, is, yeah. So. yeah. Fascinating topic. Gentlemen, thank you very much for coming in tonight. Thank you. Thanks for having Good us. Good conversation. And we'll be back in just a moment.